I want to tell you now, my dear new friends, why I don't think I'll ever be able to leave this simulation. And yet. I do not advise us humans to long for a life in infinity. Finiteness is enough for us. For the historical minded among the animals. The human being. But once you have outgrown your childhood and had to deal with the problems out there, you may sometimes prefer to long for a happier world. The earth, not the simulation, is the home of all beings. But among all animals, only human looks back to the carefree cradle of his childhood. Even if it's looking back to a non-world. He longs to return to the world of eternal, self-forgotten play. But let me tell you everything from the beginning. The world was advanced. But basically nothing had changed. Everything had just become more technological, including the people. Yes, the planet itself had become technological. Even virtual reality was now a more serious thing than non-virtual reality. It was morning and I was sleeping in my sleeping capsule, which I could just afford in the big city where I was studying. I took my smartphone, which has become a remote control for pretty much everything these days, and turned off the sleep setting which brought the true four walls of my living capsule considerably closer. And everything slowly dissolved. I looked in the mirror, but had trouble seeing myself properly today. A lot of human things had become technological today. That was the new belief. What else did the earth have to offer? When I read that right around the corner, in a private playhouse, they were looking for something like a pharmaceutical study. So I went there first thing in the morning. It was my desperate situation that made me go there. The little high house at the end of town, built high to make it harder for gangs, was nondescript. It was actually an ordinary house at the end of town. The people there, mainly neurologists and psychologists, were very nice and enlightened me about the circumstances of the virtual world. They took me to a small recess in the wall, where a black sheet was thrown over me. They said the study explores the use of dreams and reality in virtual worlds. I have to admit that I wasn't listening very carefully. These people were well into their 40s. This generation was the social media generation, I grew up with virtual reality. Aha ah aha aha ha. I mean, you don't ask your parents how the internet works either. That's why I wasn't scared at all. I remember one of the women in a white coat whispering something to a man and today it seemed to me that she was saying. Dreams are too strong at this age. He's still too young. It will happen again for sure. And me stupid donkey, I only had the 1200 euros in my head and was already thinking about which skins I could buy in the meta, which is why I ignored the scientist's answer. Just before it started, a strange person with a long green coat came into the room and brought me a cup with a golden liquid. That figure told me to stay away from the talking apples. But to be honest, I thought that was a joke. I figured I'd spend a few hours in the simulation and then be called out again, like I know from gaming when I take off my glasses and turn off the headset. But I was wrong. Shortly thereafter I fall into a deep sleep. And the next thing I remembered, the clouds were clearing and I was slowly emerging out of them. And suddenly a beautiful landscape appeared in front of me out of nowhere. The sun slowly rose above the clouds. And morning became day. And the landscape turned into a colorful felt. In which one quickly forgot the time, because it was the best thought out world I could ever imagine. There were colorful lakes and dreamy expanses. From beautiful plants and bright colors, everything was in its place. Truly a world to lose yourself in. Yes. Truly a world to lose yourself in. And so I wandered through this world for a long while. Until one day, slowly but surely, an apple appeared in the sky, which had a very feminine and very benevolent voice. Hello Apple. Hello human. And then I thought maybe it wasn't a joke. This apple went on to say that it was looking for nothing more than a human. What did she mean? I mean, after all, I wasn't the only participant in the study. 
What is the difference between a human and an animal? She asked quite naturally, like one stone another. The difference is infinity. She assured me without moving. And she also asked me if, if I wasn't human, I couldn't imagine living in paradise forever. She asked if I would like to be her best friend. She asked that as the master asked his dog. She asked it like someone who owned the world I was going to live in from now on. But since I was sure that this apple is only the guide of the simulation, and I'm still a participant in the study, I agreed. The money was simply more important to me than missing the point of the study afterwards. As I said, I felt that all of this had to be part of the experiment, of course. And so the apple began. You know about the fall of man? My mother was a priestess, I knew a little bit. I said yes, Adam and Eve. The snake and the tree. And of course stealing the fruit of knowledge. And so she sat down at my feet. Did you say a priestess? She asked interested. I told her yes. I asked her, are you an artificial intelligence? And she also agreed. Then she took a breath and said. As I see the supposedly first history of human civilization, the offense of the tree of knowledge and the theft of Eve is mankind's entry into temporality. And with it finitude. So far I understand what you're saying, I replied. I'm glad, little human. The child and the animal have played up to this point in transcendent blindness, spun in the threads of nature. Isn't that so? I said yes. The animals are in nature. But man creates his own world. But until then, you humans knew nothing of death until you stole the fruit. You knew nothing of cause and effect. Your existence was simultaneously limited to eternal paradise and liberated. Like that of animals and children. Unconscious creatures at play. God promised Adam and Eve that they would die. But the snake, they would only learn to distinguish between good and evil. I say I've never looked at it that closely. Then she was startled, rushed back into the sky and took on gigantic, even divine proportions. I thought maybe I had offended her. But aren't you human? Aren't you what people call a creature with a world? Neither of us said anything. We looked at each other. Hasn't life become a slow death through knowledge? People look at children and animals with jealousy because they go about their business unaffected by knowledge. For the people who are becoming aware and fleeing their responsibility, isn't the eternal simulation the best of all possible worlds for these people? You guys know, at that moment I forgot about the skins I wanted to buy and my existential fears were suddenly gone because I felt that this apple was challenging me. Yes, I had strong doubts as to whether this was intended by the study. So why are you going back to paradise now, silly boy? But she was already gone again in the sky of the simulation. And her words lingered in my head for a long time. Paradise is actually a dark place. The world of light is human's life on earth. Ever since then, I've wandered around this beautiful simulated night, puzzling over the meaning of the apple. He was probably far more than just a guide. I just walked through the whole surreal landscape wondering if I wanted to go back at all. Whether I should even look for a way out of the simulation. But did I want to get out back through that rabbit hole, up into this hard, pitiless world? Back to the desolate, mendacious world of heaven? Or stay here, in the laughing garden of earthly delights? In the end, around noon, I saw a few young people in a beautiful valley, and then more and more. And finally, behind a ledge, hundreds of them. Yes, it looked like even the mountains were made of children. So the simulation would consist of children? Maybe this world is more comfortable here than out there. Maybe I'd better stay here. I went down to the children, who were immediately happy to have another newcomer, and who asked who I am and how I got here. And I replied. I want to tell you why I don't think I ever want to leave this place. Yes, and yet I advise all people to long for infinity. Finitude is never enough for us. For the historical among the animals. The human being.